Whether you're conducting a grassroots exploration or looking to continually improve your ore processes and an operating mine, the need for more information with greater accuracy, precision, and speed has driven the need for new tools and new solutions. With over 2,500 thermoscientific portable XRF analyzers deployed in the global mining markets, we are helping to fulfill those needs. Companies use our analyzers every day to help them make informed decisions. And it's not just the large players that are benefiting from our technology. The affordability of our instruments allows junior companies operating on a limited budget to gain critical data for decision making in the field. You are probably already familiar with how our thermoscientific portable XRF analyzers can help you generate the required data to make smart decisions on site that save you time and money. But even we recognize that sampling techniques can greatly impact those results. In our continuous efforts to help bring the lab to the field, we are pleased to present the first ever thermoscientific mining sample collection and preparation tools. These compact, portable, battery-powered tool sets provide everything you need to perform elemental analysis of geological materials on site within minutes rather than days or weeks. On the direct rock sampler, a sample tube must be installed on the attachment to collect the powder. Once the sample is collected in the tube, you may remove it from the direct rock sampler and sieve it to separate any large pieces which could negatively affect your analysis. The minimum amount of sample required to press a pellet is 5 milliliters without chips. It's recommended that at least 7 to 10 milliliters is collected to ensure you have enough sample. When you have collected enough sample, shake the sample tube to improve sample homogeneity. You can see here that we now have enough powder to prepare a pellet. Here we have transferred the collected sample from the sample tube to a 250 micron sieve to separate out the large particles. Now we are ready to press a pellet. Preparation for using the mill begins with chipping pieces from the rock sample. Once you have some rock samples, place them inside the crusher base. With the chisel attachment placed into the holder, break the larger pieces into smaller chips. Continue to place enough pieces into the base until you feel there is enough material which represents your sample. Once the pieces are less than about two centimeters in diameter, insert the flat crusher attachment into the holder. Several blows of the hammer should be enough to reduce most of the rock to less than eight millimeters, which will then need to be sieved. Transfer the material in the bottom of the crusher base into the sieve. You can see here that the rock is now the appropriate size to deliver to the mill. Once the mill is connected to either an automobile battery or some other 12 volt DC power supply, the mill must be powered on and the sample bag attached to the collect milled material. Slowly feed the sieved material to the mill with the mill feed valve in the closed position. You can see here the mill material being collected in a sealable bag. Once the mill sounds like it is done milling the material, you may shut off the mill with the switch on the back and then remove the sample bag. Here you can see the fine powder generated by the mill. With this material, you may now generate a pressed pellet. Now we are ready to press a pellet. Assemble the press as outlined in the user's manual and feed the sieved sample directly to the pellet press. Transfer approximately one full tablespoon from the sieve base to the pellet press. Gently tap the side of the pellet press with the hammer to move the powder to the base of the press. The inside of the pellet tube must be free of powder before the piston is inserted in the press. Skipping this step may result in the piston getting stuck in the pellet press and it can be very difficult to remove. Gently move the tissue down the tube with the piston. You must make sure the pellet press is on a firm surface. Firmly hold the pellet press as shown. Gently tap the piston with the hammer to further compact the material. Then, once the material does not seem to compress anymore, give the piston one solid blow with the hammer. Do not hit the pellet multiple times or you will destroy the pellet. Now you may remove the piston, then loosen the screws to separate the base from the tube so you can remove the sample you just pelletized. Make sure you invert the press so you do not lose your pellet. 
The stainless steel pellet press must be at least half filled with material for proper analysis. If it is not half full, you must repress another pellet. Now you are ready to analyze the pellet. Place the pellet directly on the Niton FXL or in the Thermoscientific FieldMate test stand and with the analyzer installed, close the lid. You can now enter the name of the sample on the touch screen of the analyzer for later identification and then click the trigger to begin your analysis. We hope this video has been helpful in explaining how to achieve higher accuracy data from your geological samples using thermoscientific mining sample collection and preparation tools along with thermoscientific portable XRF analyzers.